Good evening, YouTube. So, I promised I would do how I did my VKS FSC conversion. So, with uh, I know I promised it uh, maybe last weekend, but man, it's been like 40 degrees here, and after 16 hour days out in the sun, I just can't fathom sitting down and doing this. And even right now, it's still 40 degrees. So, we're just gonna kind of Go through it because I know I promise some people if I miss something write a comment ask me in Facebook message you in Facebook um, but so obviously you need an FSC important things you need a VKS air chamber and bolt well it's sold as an assembly so this Technically you don't need because I have ran the FSC bolt and it runs fine, but definitely need the air chamber and The only way I've tested this currently is with a ASA uh, First strike rear adapter <clears throat> The reason this is my go-to is because the amount of material that is between The two ends of the socket head is Really substantial. I didn't really have any concern of it uh, letting go, but uh, so I went back and forth how I was going to do this video. If I was going to start from the beginning or start from where I am now, but trying to save time because uh, you know I don't have enough subscribers yet and uh, I am lit time limited. So without further ado, um, VKS air chamber. Important thing to get this to work is that little uh, air inlet there. That's what charges the chamber. Sorry, this hole here is also the charge hole. So these two must sync up. So the first thing I did was take the VKS bolt and I pushed it in and you can kind of look in this hole here and you can see when you're in the optimum position so I just passed the first o-ring and now I am right on the hole I don't know it's, it might be hard to see but so this area in that hole from the regulator matches the air inlet to the air chamber. What I did after this is I measured with this um, rear adapter in place what the distance was to keep the chamber secured in this exact location. That turned out to be four millimeters. Second most important part is these spacers, aluminum spacers that I got from AliExpress. They are four millimeters thick, four millimeter hole, which is as close to um, the rear bolt, or sorry, the rear Allen head that secures the ASA is 632, so closest to it. And the diameter is eight millimeters. Now, unintentionally, it worked out really good. That, that eight millimeters outside diameter wasn't, uh, a variable that you could choose. You could choose four by eight by two by three by five by six. So you could vary the height and the whole size, obviously, but not the actual diameter. So I will link these in the description. Important. They are placed like this, all around the rear. So when you actually secure this cap down, or sorry, the rear ASA, so I don't know if you can see it, I'm gonna probably lose a little bit of focus here. You see it fall off anyways. So when you secure this down, it makes a very solid connection, and there's not any flex in this, it's holding this uh, chamber securely against the backing of this. Now, this is where you could do different. So, for HPA, 
to reuse this adapter, I inserted a 632 by 3 8 socket head cap screw. Oddly enough, the height of this head is 4 millimeters. Exactly the same as the spacer. So, this is just by chance. There's no, I didn't, uh, definitely didn't engineer this in, in any way or form. So, I threaded this, actually here, before I get too far. This is the part that's a little bit difficult and you kind of need a drill, drill press for it. So I took this Allen head, I drilled through it to make an air hole. I used a 1 16th drill bit to drill through it and a 9 64th, and this is important if you're going to do HPA, to just divot the end of this socket head, like right into the Allen head. So I'll hold it up close here. You just need a, an edge. If you drill too deep, it's going to leak. And this is the kind of issue I was running into. I was trying to find a happy medium. You literally just touch this with a drill, divot this, it gives an edge, and that edge catches the factory ASA O-ring and keeps it in place. So when you actually squish these two together, It's locating that o-ring so originally what I didn't do was free drill this or divot this head and what happened is it worked it worked it worked but then sometimes it would just squirt this o-ring out because there's no way to retain it from spitting it out so that's the HBA method so you install it you drill this 632 by 3 8 you could even go quarter 16th down the center Divot the head 964, lock tight it in or thread tape it, but I mean it's a pretty small screw to be thread taping, so I just use blue Loctite thread it in, and you're good to go. You install your spacers and you install your rear ASA. But for those of you that maybe don't have access to drill press or just want to run CO2, the FSC comes factory set CO2 through the mag. So this air passageway is actually already blocked off. So you could skip this completely. Sorry, I might be holding this. You could skip this screw completely and just install the spacers and the back cap and you'd be good to go. CO2 through the mag. That being said, I would highly recommend if you were going to skip that step to still just get the 632 by quarter or 3 8 uh, allen head thread it in you don't have to drill the center out um, for HPA but thread it in I mean you can picture there's only three volts allen head securing this in so having that extra just piece there for this to butt up against makes it a little more secure the final thing is the standard screw that comes with the ASA is a 632 by one and a half. <clears throat> when I was doing my sort of prototyping, this screw works. It threads in, but I definitely didn't feel comfortable um, leaving this particular screw in place. I felt like it was just a hair too short. I'd much rather prefer it is the threads are sunk in more here so what I did and what you'll need to do regardless if you do CO2 or HPA is just get a longer longer Allen head so factory 632 by one and a half this particular one is 632 by one and three quarters so with this extra gap here introduced and these thread in, they actually thread in about a quarter inch, which is about the same as factory, which is, in my opinion, makes it safer, I guess. Um, so 
I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything here, but I, I, it, it really is pretty simple. So what I'll do now is I'll assemble. So I've inserted the VKS air chamber until I can see the, the air hole there. Not exactly critical, but it just makes it easier when you're assembling it in this method. Again, this is my HPA, so I'm going to show you the HPA method. Um, so first thing I find is easiest is to place oops, these three aluminum spacers on here. Hopefully the camera's catching this good. I take my ASA adapter. So I take the longer 632 by one and three quarters. I drop them through. Taking note of where the air hole is for the HPA. So I'm gonna kind of skip some steps here, you know, just basic ASA install, but so you should oil this O-ring, la da da, oh, la da 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 da. I place the O-ring in its place there. This is all carefully kind of balancing it. And with the ASA, all the three screws in there, I, oops, squish it all together. And you can see kind of how it went there. Yeah, I can't turn that way. You can see the O-ring is protruding at this point because it's not tightened down, which is very similar to how the factory um, ASA would tighten together. So once you got it kind of placed together like this, take your Allen wrench, and start your Allen heads. It's important not to just crank one down on one side. It's kind of like torquing uh, head bolts in an engine or wheel lug nuts. So. I usually just crisscross from here to here to here to here until it's tight and then I go to this one because there's only three but so I'm just gonna snug them just so you can see what you'd be looking at so like this you can see already that o-ring is already begin to kind of squish into place there it just so happens this eight millimeter outside diameter of these things is perfect for centering the vks air chamber like perfect I, it, it just came to be like that so finish tightening it down Now I'm up, not Kung Fu tight, remember the receiver's aluminum. So, this is fully tightened up. And the important part is, look at this. See how tightly that Allen head sealed that O-ring into the factory little depression in the rear ASA. And that is about it. Like this, I have had zero problems with leaks. So originally, you know, I was just trying to play, account for this gap here, and I was blowing O-rings out, and CO2 is freezing them. This one has worked flawlessly. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's about it. And I mean, you follow your regular steps once you have this tightened in. Set your bolt forward before you tighten your, or sorry, your uh, trigger group down. Line all up. Oh, which one is this guy here?
I've actually found it's good practice. This particular rag screw or this retention rag, rag retention screw here is to put a little dab of Loctite on it, especially when you're pounding this thing with high FPS. This comes loose, things kind of get wonky in here. Your trigger can skip. I find that important to do. Uh, okay, that's on. And the next step would be to. Oh, you know what? Don't forget your little donut goes on your uh, trigger arm here. Slap your grip frame back on. And voila. There you go. Set up for ASA. Rear air. Um, again, you don't want uh, rear air. At this point, I've only tested this block as a retention, but you could skip this and just leave it factory blocked here. Uh, sorry, factory air hole blocked. And essentially this is just a retention point. Um, I do have a folding stock I'm gonna try, but the ears on the folding stock are relatively thin. So, I don't know yet, but that's why I only show you what I've tested. And there you have it. Any questions? Let me know. I will um, link this these particular spacers, and I won't link the socket head just because I'm in Canada and a lot of stuff doesn't translate to other countries. But it's a 632. This particular one by 3/8 socket head cap. You could go as short as quarter. Very common size, nothing nothing fancy about this. Doesn't have to be uh, hardened steel or 12.9 grade. Um, the actually factory Allen heads are not. So the stainless that you saw me using that I installed is actually uh, stronger than these grade two kind of Allen heads that uh, come factory. The uh, stainless 304, 18.8, or otherwise known as is kind of like about a grade five so it's already stronger than the factory bolt so I'm not too concerned about that but yep any questions put them in the comments I'll do my best to uh, to answer them and uh, good luck <laughs>